For this video, I am looking at how the cultural zeitgeist affected pop music and if this caused an evolution in the genre. Pop music has been considered by many to be one of the most lucrative genres in the history of music as well as one of the most important. The genre, which clearly stems from the term popular music, has also been one of the most inconsistent of the most well-known genres due to its influence from other forms of music. The terms popular music and pop music were often used interchangeably, as popular music is more often used to describe the forms of music that are or were popular at a point in time whereas pop music is most likely the music that you hear in the pop charts. According to Simon Frith in his article, The Cambridge Companion to Pop and Rock in the Cambridge University Press, instead of focusing on a particular subculture or ideology of music, the main focus of pop music is actually more fixed on the aim of appealing to a general audience, an emphasis on craftsmanship rather than the formal or artistic qualities. Throughout its development, pop music has absorbed influences from other genres of popular music, Early pop music originally drew on the sentimental ballads for its form, gained its use of vocal harmonies from gospel and soul music, its instrumentation from jazz and rock music, its orchestration from classical music, its tempo from dance music, its backing from electronic music, its rhythmic sections from its hip-hop music, and of course, the spoken word from rap music. key part of the culture we live in is the television we watch and this is where I feel there's the overlap between the zeitgeist and pop music. This was especially clear in the 21st century or the 2000s as one of the highest viewed forms of media on television in that era had a real change on how we view pop music and that is of course reality television. So Simon Cowell, creator of X Factor, American Idol, Britain's Got Talent, in the beginning basically decided to create a game show environment to appeal to people and their want for stardom, fame and to be the next pop star, hence the title of the show, and at the same time appeal to audiences to watch this by making use of reality TV tropes at the time. Well that was the introduction of the pop idol and X yeah. Factor phenomenon which I feel like is declining as we speak. I mean, back in the noughties, they would claim dominate your Christmas number one. Oh, so yeah. I definitely feel like he had a massive impact on pop culture and that new age of um, yeah, everyday person entering a competition and becoming a worldwide star practically overnight, <laughs> which was previously not as... wasn't as commonly heard of yeah. now so he definitely had a massive impact on the pop world and and music and the music industry as a whole another way that the zeitgeist can affect pop music would be if massive parts of what we perceived as our collective culture literally affect how artists write and release their music and by that I mean the idea of crossover marketing. Pop music has been used as part of marketing pretty much since the inception of both the genre and the idea of multimedia marketing. Companies have used pop songs and artists to promote their products for decades with a key name for using this idea being the brand Pepsi. Pepsi has been famous for using artists known by mainstream audiences for promotion of their drinks, be it film stars or sports stars or in the case of this topic, musicians. Artists such as Britney Spears, Pink, Beyonce, Enrique Iglesias, Madonna and Michael Jackson have all got involved with the brand with some campaigns being more successful than others. As well as this, we legitimately have the case of artists even writing songs for companies to boost their sales. Case in point, the case of the song I'm Loving It by Justin Timberlake. If you don't remember it, don't worry, you've been basically listening to it for 15 years. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Now, in 2003, McDonald's commissioned the Neptunes, the group fronted by 
Pharrell Williams to create a jingle for them to use and for Justin Timberlake to sing the jingle and release the song and for that he was paid near enough six million dollars. As I stated before, the idea of the culture affecting pop music is very much more definitive in the current decade that we live in. And I personally believe, as well as others, that no other media platform that we currently have uh, control of has influenced and affected pop music or music in general more than the platform that you're probably currently watching me on right now, YouTube. Since its inception in 2005, YouTube has changed the way we view and record music and even have access to it by taking the ideas that led to the creation of MTV back in the 80s, which were using music videos to promote artists and allowing viewers to see, say what they want about these videos, as well as have access to viewing them and listening to the music in these videos anytime they please. In terms of the songs that I alluded to, do you remember these? <laughs> songs that were either entered or in some cases actually topped the charts after starting off as trends on YouTube itself or which I guess in turn came from Vine probably but there were things that were trending on the internet and things that people just shared in most likely comedy videos uh, especially with Psy whose song started off as just a song in a video that intrigued people but then went to number one in the charts, which could be said led to the his acceptance in the charts could lead could have led to the current popularity, I guess I'd say, of the K-pop scene in the Western world. In terms of the artists that I mentioned, well, it, YouTube itself works as a platform that people don't just have to talk about the music that they like and the artists that they like, but they can also put their music at themselves for other viewers to look to and talk to and stuff like that. And this works very well as a platform to get people in the know looking at your music. And this worked so well for various artists who, as is known, just were found on YouTube and were, you know, signed and scouted from there. People such as La Rizzle Kicks, Billie Eilish or Justin Bieber, one of the biggest pop stars of this decade was literally scouted off YouTube by Usher and signed to a big time contract and is now a multi-millionaire. At the beginning of this video, I asked, does the culture affect pop music? In the end, of course. That's not to say it doesn't work the other way around. I mean, loads of things have influences on other things and it's just a part of life. I guess it could all stem back from the idea of people being products of their environment. And this genre is very much the same. Where do you see the next decade going? Oh gosh, I mean, that's such an ambiguous question. <laughs> um, we've seen such a massive change in such a short amount of time due to technological advances. Um, I definitely see that um, musicians themselves and artists are becoming a lot more um, independent whereas they can self-market themselves they've got the whole tools to do it themselves as it were so I, I definitely see like these underground artists like putting their music out there on social media and getting a massive um, massive crowd like Billie Eilish I mean she posted a video of her singing a song that her brother recorded and now she's I mean right now she's 
um, released her debut album and it's massive. And she's like being seen as like the next big thing. Yeah, she like is the next big thing and it's kind of like, you know, all stems from social media. Um, and we're entering the era of the streaming artists where yeah. music is becoming a service and not a product itself, yeah. which is quite interesting for me working in the physical of market. Of course, yeah. So, I mean, without, with our physical music, um, it's more than just a product for you to use to listen to music. It's a something to keep and something as a, as a souvenir of your love for that artist, for example. Yeah. So I feel like it's definitely turning into that. And looking at the artist more than just making music, but looking to them as star makers and becoming a brand, as it were. Oh, yeah. Well, I, so, especially like what you were saying with Billie Eilish, like the idea of, like I said, this decade is very about counterculture. Mm. And she very much signifies that because, like, from all the people I've heard talking about it, it's just like, oh, she's so different. It's mm. something new. And she I was is like, different. Yeah. And it's such a juxtaposition because her music is so eerie and haunting but her voice is so soft yeah. and delicate and as you know typically is a she's yeah. not a girly girl she's not a girl girl it's and very, I like yeah. that as for where it is going from here who knows but it will definitely continue to adapt with the times and in turn inspire others to evolve their own forms of art because pop music has been around for that long and I don't see it going away anytime soon <laughs>